And going back to what's happening inside the courtroom, uh, Hoffinger, the prosecutor, asking, moving past 2011, between that and 2011 and 2016, when you found out Dylan Howard raised Stormy regarding Stormy, had you heard anything more about the Stormy matter? Cohen says, nothing. Hoffinger says, when you learned on October 8th that the Stormy Daniels story had resurfaced, did you also learn from Mr. Howard that there was an attorney representing her? Cohen says, yes, Keith Davidson was going to be representing Stormy Daniels, same attorney as last time, where we had a positive result. And so now they're introducing a series of texts from 2016. Now, this is October 9th, 2016, just a month before the election. Uh, Dylan Howard to Michael Cohen emailed you. Uh, Keith will do it. Let's reconvene tomorrow. Thank you. Resolution Consultants, LLC, is the name of the entity I formed a week ago. Whenever you wake, please call my cell because Michael Cohen is still in London. They're in different time zones. Hoffinger said, did you return to New York from London? Yes, says Cohen. More texts with Davidson and Howard? Yes, says Cohen. Texts between Dylan Howard and Michael Cohen and connecting Keith and Michael, connecting them both. So this is Keith Davidson, the attorney who had cleaned up the deal before now being brought back in, creating an LLC, a, a limited partnership. So Danny's, this is why they brought in the Karen McDougal stuff first. Yeah. Yeah. Tell it's, me how you established that LLC, Catherine. Tell me, not, not you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Michael Cohen, tell me how you established that yeah. LLC. And tell me why you did it. And now here it is used again, and this is the, the heart of the case. And that's why his banker testified, and that's why Keith Davidson testified. It's sort of corroborating him. So now the jury is already, oh, that's right, his banker said that. Oh, that's right, that's what Stormy Daniels' lawyer said. So this is all him now putting a bow on it. But as Andrew said, Donald Trump is charged with causing false entries in his business records. So when will Mr. Cohen say that Donald Trump either directed me to do it or I told him I was going to do it and he gave me the big thumbs up? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the crime, causing the false entries. Danny. As a defense lawyer, you knew this was coming, but how are you going to try to undermine the credibility of this testimony? The defense's options have been narrowing since day one, and that happens sometimes. Sometimes when you're on defense, your job is mostly improv. The prosecutor is building something, and they have to build it almost perfectly because any kind of reasonable doubt and the foundation crumbles. But much of what a defense attorney does is not plan but react. And so I would say the defense has been winnowing down since day one to really just maybe one of two avenues. Number one, that Michael Cohen went rogue, that he did this without Donald Trump knowing about it. But as but we can see... But that is undermined by... I mean, that doesn't make sense considering all the contacts back and forth on all of this. And you see, that's why they introduced that context, to show it less likely mm -hmm. that Michael Cohen would just go and do this as a rogue operative. The other angle is probably going to be intent. They're probably going to focus on the absence of the intent to defraud. But as Catherine probably knows, the definition of intent to defraud in New York is actually much broader than you may think. The defense will try to frame this as no one was defrauded. This was just a company making some false entries that never got out to the public. But as I said, in New York, the definition of that intent and is broader and the prosecutors benefit from let that. Let me ask both of you, how, how important is it to establish that it was the campaign that was the motivating factor and not keeping this away from Melania. Danny? It's very important because, well, assuming for the moment that that is the secondary crime that the state is going to use to aggravate uh, the falsification of business records into a felony, it's critical. But we're in this very strange situation where we're not entirely sure what that second crime, that aggravating crime, is going to be. We have a pretty good idea. We've narrowed it down to a couple different crimes. But yes, it's key for them. And they've been laying that foundation all the way. Uh, was this, we've heard this from other witnesses, was this about Melania or was it about the campaign? That's why you have witnesses testifying, including Stormy Daniels, as to the value of her story increasing as the election approached. Uh, other witnesses who talked about the concern for the campaign and not Melania. But throughout this trial, you have gotten some testimony that Trump was also concerned about Melania as well. So the campaign is everything if they're going to use some form of election law uh, to aggravate this to a felony. So that is key. It's a theme they've explored throughout the trial. Let me just jump in because there's some interesting stuff happening inside the courtroom. I know, I know Andrew Weissman, you want to jump in on this. Um, this is 
Michael Cohen testifying about telling Donald Trump about the Stormy Daniels story that was um, at risk of coming out. Uh, he says, I did tell Donald Trump because it was a matter that affected him, and that was what I always did to keep him abreast of everything. Hoffinger asks, was this a serious matter? Cohen says, a very serious matter. Cohen says then, he was really, really angry with me. I thought you had this under control, Cohen says, Donald Trump says. We did in 2011, but I have no control over what she goes out and does. And he said there was a previous denial, and he said, just take care of it. There was a lot going on with the campaign, and he said, just take care of it. This is a total disaster. Women will hate me. Guys may think it's cool, but it's going to be a disaster. At the time, Cohen says Trump was polling very poorly with women, and this coupled with the previous Access Hollywood tape would not be good for the campaign. Stated it was a disaster, and he wanted Michael Cohen to get control over it. So this is the first introduction of Michael Cohen saying Donald Trump directly told me to take care of the excess, not the excess, the Stormy Daniels matter. Take care of the Stormy Daniels story. It's going to be a disaster. This is what Michael Cohen is testifying that Donald Trump told him in the aftermath of the Access Hollywood tape when the Stormy Daniels story came out. Offender then asked, did you have a conversation with Donald Trump about a particular strategy? Cohen says he told me to work with David, as in David Pecker, and take control and purchase the rights and stop this from getting out and purchase and acquire the life rights. He says, push it out as long as you can. Just get past the election.